stand, so I'm yeah. not in the, in the <laughs> So you're not in the picture. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Yes, my son is bigger than the state of New Jersey, so. There we go. I'm sure maybe they're for Yeah. New York, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And all, Trenton and all of New Jersey. All you love business, because right now, the population is the best one that's going to be home. Sure, there's a thing. I'll put the sides up today. But as I'm letting it go natural, it's like 12 different colors. Oh, yeah. Well, today I was going to I just thought, no, I like it. Okay. My hair is like, I have to find out what color my hair is. I know, that's what I was going to say. Black. I didn't like it. Excuse me, I have decided to be very black. No, I know. I didn't do. You look good. County Court, uh, and we'll go into session for our regular part of our agenda beginning at 10 a.m. and we will begin with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> so, uh, we're going to jostle, jostle a couple of things around on the agenda. We'll take public comment here right at the beginning, as soon as we do the approval of minutes. And we have two things we need to do before we get to the, the ordinance discussion, and that's the symmetry care update and uh, planning director update the plan. So let's go through the minutes. We'll get, we'll get public comment going and hear from everybody. I move to approve the Hardy County Court meeting minutes of May 5th, 2021. Second. We've been seconded to approve the County Court minutes of May 5th, 2021. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. So, awesome. Start with public comment. We got a few a lot of people out there that don't want to comment, so let's take the comment from inside. And if you guys maybe can funnel out, we can funnel those in, so we can hear from everybody. We'll work the best, I think. Sound fair? Okay. Let's begin. Who wants to go first? Hi, my name is Kristen Bates. I'm the chair of the Huntington Republican um, Party here. And um, I just want to speak in favor of the ordinance that, that we are going to be deliberating on later today, or later in this agenda, the Hawaii County um, Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. I think in light of things that have been happening um, in Salem, um, and the, the Senate bill that just passed, Senate Bill 554, uh, be that it's uh, incumbent upon the county court to take action to protect the citizens of this, of this uh, county from um, state um, laws that violate the Second Amendment and violate the Oregon Constitution. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, I've got a couple of things here. Uh, first thing, um, a couple of people couldn't be here that wanted to make, wanted to make comment. This first one is from uh, Nancy and Terry Williams. Then we had planned to attend a meeting this morning with the court. However, Terry Hurt. Uh, he's back yesterday and has helped Jack Joyce get a water tank functioning this morning. We certainly support this issue. Good luck and God bless. That was uh, uh, from Terry and Nancy Williams. And 
The second one is in support of the sanctuary ordinance uh, by Mark and Robin Christie. It's a short letter here. I'd like to uh, in introduce this letter into the record as well after I read it. Harney County divided from Grant County in, in 1889, achieving recognition and becoming its own political power. Historical figures, both men and women, have contributed to the great history of our county. In taming this high desert rugged frontier pioneer, men and women used both the law and guns to fight and hold onto their values and chosen lifestyles. The homesteaders who struggled to make this high desert oasis home did not shirk their duties or responsibilities. They did not think of themselves as heroes or villains, although at times may have appeared so. They did understand freedom and justice, along with the opportunity to self-govern at a local level where there were times where there, where there were times it had to be fought for and it would be or it would all be lost. This high desert county has never been for the small-minded or timid individuals. It is a county that requires bravery, individualism, and a willingness to stand for freedom and justice. Don't tell us that you don't want the responsibility because when you courageously placed your name on a ballot, you accepted the duty to stand up for the rights, freedoms, and beliefs of the citizens of the county. As we face the state government as attempting to make unconstitutional extraterritorial laws, there is an urgency in which this must be dealt with. Standing up for the pioneer heritage of our frontier and our right to govern ourselves will often place you at odds with the majority in the, in the state government. None of you were elected to represent the people of Salem or the west side of the state, but, but to represent your neighbors and citizens here in Harney County. Your determination and boldness must be equal to the tasks before you. If any of you are not prepared to accept the responsibilities of leadership, then you should sit down. During every generation, there comes a time when they must deal with oppression. They, they either stand up against the tyranny or accept oppression and learn to live with it. Every man must be judged by the times in which they live. How do each of you want to be remembered? Sincerely, Mark and Robin Christie. I would like to add my comments to that, and I think it's very important at this time that uh, our county commission, and the county court, uh, commissioners and the court, uh, stand up for the Second Amendment rights of our individuals. Um, we have uh, in Salem, um, not just with this issue, but with other issues, and I think they're going to be coming down the pipe, that we have, we need a buffer and we need people from this county to protect us. And we elected you to do that, and we hope that you would do that in the beginning with this the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. It's very important for us. Uh, there are several counties that have already passed this. There's a pending litigation in one of those counties, and I don't want that county to stand up by itself. I want other counties to stand with them as they go to court to prove up the rights of our Second Amendment um, and the obligation of, of our counties to, to stand up for the rights of the, of the people based on their oath of office, which is to uphold the Constitution of both the United States and, and the state of Oregon. That's what I have to say, and I hope you will uh, take it seriously. Thank you. What else on this side? Sure. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I use the will. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I think that this is probably one of, an issue that I thought would never be in front of us in this county and any other state in this union, but it is, and I think uh, every day that our constitutional rights are challenged, we need to start at the grassroots of things, and that brings us right back here to Hardy County. We need representation from the people up, not from the governor or the president down. And that's all I'm going to say about this, but I, I do uh, hope that the county people feel that this is an issue that's worth looking into and, and uh, approach it that way. Thank you. This is Larry. Yeah, uh, I'm Larry Williams. I'm a PCP for Harney County Republicans. I'm, I'm here, you know, with many others to support uh, a positive decision from you folks on our Sassel Amendment and our Second Amendment rights. And we just encourage uh, a positive outcome on that. Thank you. Yeah, there's, my name is Chris Weisman. I'm also with the Republican Party. And uh, there's really not much more I could say that anyone hasn't said already. Except that this is your job. Your job is to represent us. And there's enough of us here today. And I hope that the three of you understand this is what we want. 
And besides your personal feelings on this, you're here to represent us. You know, and the letter said it pretty good. It said, if you don't want to pass it, step down. We're done. And we're tired of waiting. Everyone's had a chance to look at it. None of it's going to be perfect. Nothing written by man is perfect. But this is about the best shot we got. If we don't stand together with all these other counties, we're going to fall. We're already failing. You know, they're, they're making it a health crisis, which we know is a load of garbage. We need your help. All right. Thanks. I want to stand up out of respect for the court. I brought three copies. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't bring one for you. But what what that is is a testimony that I gave in January 2020 to this court. What did they give you? No. Um, the, uh, nothing's changed, and I hope before you make a decision, you take time to review those comments. The language in, in this ordinance is slightly different. These people are, are passionate and they're right. And I stand with them on defending the Second Amendment. I'm always taking my guns, period. When you show up at Larry's house, I'll be there beside Larry saying, we'll take my gun. We keep talking about they are going to come out and get our guns. Can you tell me who they is? Not our local cops. It's not the sheriff's department. It's not OSP. I'm pretty sure it's not the National Guard. And they know it's not the US military. And God forbid it is, because one of us with an AR isn't going to do real good against an Apache. The, this keeps coming back, and I understand it, and I understand the passion to have it. The words in this document just don't make it. They don't cover it. We've had three court cases about this. Have you read in detail Judge Kramer's two decisions? Have you read it in detail Judge Sullivan's decision? Mr. Smith talked about the Columbia, <coughs> County, the Columbia County case. Here's a challenge I got for you. Are you going to engage in that case? Mr. Smith, I think, is advocating for it. If you believe in this, you should be. Your attorneys can help you with that. Enter in this litigation. But I want to ask you a few questions for you to think through. The court to think through. And it's why. Why now? You've heard a couple of reasons. They're going to take our guns. They're going to legislate us out of existence. That ain't happening because we're not going to lie. But have you asked yourself, what's the problem you're fixing and how does this fix it? The word being a sanctuary is a good thing. Compromising the cop's ability to make a decision in conflict with state law is a bad thing. Is it that the state and the federal legislature are moving to restrict your gun rights and that the ordinance will some way take precedence over them? Because it won't. Yes, we work for the people of this county. I did that for 18 years. Yes, we do. But we also are part of America, and we can't separate ourselves from that, and shouldn't. Is it that they are coming to, to get our guns? Do you think this is going to stop them? These words won't stop that. Is it you believe that law enforcement isn't doing their job, you can fix it with this? I think law enforcement understands better than most county court members, certainly the ones in the past, had to understand that our law enforcement knew how to apply the laws. You're talking about an ordinance here that has no impact whatsoever on anybody but the sheriff and his deputies. You have no jurisdiction over the cities. This isn't going to impact the city cops. What are we going to do when a deputy tries to use this ordinance and he needs mutual aid and a city cop won't or OSP won't? How, how is he going to handle that in the middle of a crisis? And how does this help fix that problem?
I also want to challenge you, really, does this county court believe that it can operate in opposition to court decisions that have been made that say this law doesn't, this ordinance does not pass, pass the test of law? On what legal basis do you have, and I hope you will put that on the record as you have your discussion, about what the legal basis is that you believe yourself to be above those court decisions? If you wait for Columbia County, if you engage in it, I encourage you to do that. If you wait until that decision is made, you may find that it endorses this. And then you move it ahead. You may find that it's totally in conflict, and you don't have to look like you have to undo what you might choose to do today. The state attorney generals engaged in the Columbia County situation because of all the other counties that have done the same thing. So now it's a statewide issue. Well, that case will have a huge determination. In a few weeks, months, it isn't going to be that big a deal to determine whether to move this or not. Nobody's coming to get our guns in the next few weeks. Finally, I want you to think about something as you resolve problems. Why are those gun laws coming ahead? Why are those restrictive actions in D.C. and Salem? Why are they occurring? I'm going to tell you this morning. Let me answer my own question first. What I heard here over and over is them. It's that group you don't like. It's the dang Democrats. It's the dang Republicans. It's the minorities. It's Black Lives Matter. It's whoever, but it's them. They're the ones doing it to us. They want to get our guns. This morning, I listened to a follow-up news article on the little girl, sixth grader in Rigby, Idaho, who walks into the school with a firearm in her backpack and opens fire. To the credit of her teacher, the teacher disarmed her. Things didn't get as bad as they could have. That's what's scaring people in this nation, and that is what's driving these gun ordinances. Not this. Not to take down the Second Amendment. It's fear of the gun violence. What are you, as our elected officials, doing to address gun violence? I've asked our two state legislators what they're doing, and the answer is they can't do anything until after the session. I'm going to tell you, I damn well better not hear that, oh, we have to wait until we're in session, after the session's over. I want them pulling gun owners together, and I want us figuring out how to deal with gun violence. We need to be part of that solution. But that's what's underlying this thing. Quit telling yourself it's them. It isn't them. It's us doing that. That's how this nation works. Our enemies worldwide are laughing at us as we do this stuff that fragments us. Harney County, I'm so proud to give, to live here, to be a part of it, to have been the county judge for 18 years. I'm proud of the county court. Do the right thing today. Don't put something into place that we can't defend. Don't get involved in that other legislation. I wish you the best in making your decision. These are hard things to do. And these people being concerned, they ought to be concerned. And I'm right with them being concerned. Figure a solution. That's all. I'd like it. Since I was, my name was invoked in that, I would like to have an opportunity to rebut Mr. Grasty there. The first thing I'd like to enter into evidence or into the record here is a letter from an attorney we've been working with, Tyler Smith. If I'd let you rebut to everything, we're going to be here all day. He brought my name up. You got one minute. Okay. I'm going to introduce this right here, a letter that from July 23rd, 2020 to the court. It has some annotations on it, but it is an original letter refuting the decision by Kramer and Sullivan. The Sullivan decision was nothing more than copy and paste of what Kramer did. They're both erroneous and negligent in their tone and in their legal fact. Don't laugh at me, Steve. 
Okay. The second thing, and the second thing is, he brought up our legislature. Both Finley and both Mark Owen both support what we're trying to do here, and they both have. I have letters from them and notes from them, and I think you do as well from Owens. I'm not sure about Finley, but Finley said he agrees with what we're trying to do with here. Our legislators are supporting us, and our state legislators are supporting us in what we're trying to do here today. And to him, for him to say that they are not is not is not correct. So, anybody in the lobby wants to step in? And make, oh, sorry. Grab <laughs> that. After. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Pete, I'm, uh, I couldn't so, uh, probably bitch, and I'm in favor of the proposal here. Um, in due respect, but um, this is a, a political process, and it's going to require a, a social getting together and talking about what Steve said, but a political process. Because it's the political process <coughs> threatening our rights. And so I believe that adopting this ordinance locally will show that there's participatory government here at Carn County, mm -hmm. and it will show that we're on record as supporting um, this move. If it turns out to be not legal later, fine. We can just abandon it and go with whatever the legal process is. I'm saying this is local government at its best. The court should support the will of the people. It's not that far out of line. It appears to support the Constitution. I think it's the right thing to do to adopt it. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any reason we can't move upstairs so more? Because they're going to enforce they're everybody to wear masks if we go upstairs. <coughs> they're only let so many in the room. So the best we got. So if we wear masks, we'll move upstairs? I don't even know if it's available. I didn't know. It is. But I, I just, they said there's let's, nothing going on. Let's out. continue on. The comments from outside, please. Then, <laughs> you know, anybody wants to make comments out there? Oh, my God. Thank you. I'm Dick Berry. I've uh, been a resident here for 75 years. I look around this room and I... I want to just ask a question. How many people do you know in Harney County that their fathers or their grandfathers didn't fight for this country? And that's all we're asking for you to do is fight for us in this country. Make a decision. If it's wrong, we can correct that. We can move on. But simply not making any decision and waiting, we can wait too long. It's, it's just like a military movement. You've got to do something. You can set your run down. Make a decision, please. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to see how many. My name is Jordan oh, yeah, Conroy. I'm just here to support this. We need to get this passed. This current administration is after our rights. And if you like our freedoms and all of our other amendments we have, the second has to be the thing. There is no others without the second. And we need to get something passed soon. Because they are after us. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. <coughs> Hello. What, uh, I'd like to know what's going on with the, I hear this is for our Second Amendment rights uh, ordinance or something. Is this what Second, Second Amendment. Second Amendment sanctuary. Well, it's our normal court meeting. With the, we're taking public comments now. Take that mask off so I can hear you. Sorry. So it's a, uh, it's our normal court meeting. We're taking public comment on the Second Amendment. Sanctuary ordinance. Well, I'm in favor. It's a little bit I'm farther favor favor of feet. I, I can't imagine why you guys wouldn't be in favor of something like that. I think it's safe to say we, we can't get my head wrapped around it. We all are, agree with everything everybody here is saying. Oh. 100%. Oh, good. It's the legalities and the lawsuits that 
Well, to hell with them. I have that come. <laughs> then that's your, then but you, I know our budget. <laughs> so that's 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 a challenge. Um, and then we'll let it be challenged. And then then the enforcement of of uh, the so this with Beaver County doesn't include the cities. Well, what the hell do you you guys think is going to happen if uh, they start wanting to come after our guns in this county? Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna happen. Well, I wouldn't think so. So, but why can't we have something on the on the books to show them that we're serious about keeping our firearms? And we do. And, and as far as uh, saying uh, the okay. SAP, uh, preservation okay. ordinance, but we passed a few years ago to send the message to say, well, we don't agree with what's going on there, but it 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 will hold up because it still gives our sheriff and our DA the ability to, to I just wanted to job. say he's speaking for himself at this time. I'm just trying to keep saying that. And you know, there's a there you had a whole room of people out here. Oh. A lot of them left pissed off <clears throat> because why well, there wasn't it upstairs where you had you could get everybody in there and take everybody's comments and I think you'd probably see how a lot of the community feel about Anyway, think about this. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Any other comments? Come on. <clears throat> Tony Foster, in support. <laughs> I think it's past time that we protect ourselves. And it's past time for the wait. Get it done. That's it. Mary Parker, do you all put your <coughs> hand on the Bible to support, to support the Constitution of your elected? Will this not give the attempt to try to do that? Isn't it worth the effort to try? Even if they find it. That's what we're doing, find it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other public comment? Anybody else want to make a comment? Looks like you got our comments. Thank you. We hear you loud, loud and clear. So we'll get back to our agenda. We got two topics, and we'll be back to to discuss the, this. And I'm, we're moving things around best we can, but some other things we're scheduling. Could I say one more thing? I, I, as a reminder, um, I didn't bring them down today, but you have them in your file somewhere. I think uh, nearly 300 signatures of, of people from the community who have supported this in the past, and those people are still there and. Uh, that those signatures were gathered in a matter of about two weeks. If we needed to get signatures for a support for this, we could probably get a thousand in, in a matter of two weeks or three weeks. So, no, we question that too. Okay. Just want to remind you. No, I know. They're, they're in my office. I still got them. Yeah. Come on. You like to say things. Come on. It's hard to make a comment when you can't be in here to hear what everybody has said. We're out here, can't hear anything. So we can't make a comment about what's being said and what's really going on. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Past comments, but can I make a suggestion? Put a big screen TV that will be out there so people can huddle and at least it would be it would be helpful and it serves your purpose in here and, and ours out here. Thank you. Can this 
Can we burn it for you on this part now before we go back into this? Okay. Okay. So. You guys all come on in. <laughs> Sorry to package in the day, Chris. No, that's wrong. So, item B is some of your current annual program update to us. Yeah, we're going to cover just real briefly some of the data that we do in our contract. And contracts do um, July 1. So, when we get down, everybody's radar screen to get that re up. And, Hopefully we continue with that. I'm just going to do some data, um, a couple few new program things, and so we'll go over that real quickly as well. So um, the performance standards in the, in the contract, thank you guys, what we do is look at the strategic plan. So, in the contract, we have certain kind of performance standards that, that, that says that we would we want to address, and, and then we're going to cover some of the site review and some of our data uh, related to that. Also, it's also some of the performance standards are in our strategic plan, and I wanted to um, cover some of those things. Some of these are real basic too. So, in our strategic plan, on the first page, if this this is a progress report looking at 2021 on how we did on our strategic plan, the things that we accomplished. And I'm not going to go through all this. And so I'm just going to highlight a couple items that I think are relevant to some of the new programming in that and some of the grant um, funding that we received. And one of those <clears throat> grants that we received was actually to remodel our kitchen to make it more like a commercial kitchen that we could use for our clients to teach like uh, health and wellness and nutrition and cooking classes and that type of thing. And that actually was done a couple months ago and it's been great. And we use it all the time um, and it's been really good especially for our addictions clients. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the day program for addictions clients, but they're there, and, and uh, health and nutrition for people with addiction is, is a big deal, so. What's that? We need to leave it open if you just. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the next, on the next page, the CCBHC program developments under goals under expand scope of services. So Ashley Vander Dawson's our site nurse practitioner, and she has since got her license as a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So she went back and did another two years of course work in psychiatry um, kind of work. And so that basically when they are a family nurse practitioner, it's the medical side, and the psychiatric nurse practitioner includes the mental health and the, the mental health medications, <clears throat> those types of things for us. Um, our clients, and so she did that and has been providing those services for several months now, which has been a huge deal to us because we had contracts with outside psychiatrists for years, and we were able to end those contracts. Well, we didn't totally end the one with Dr. Chandra Gary, who's still uh, who's going to cover for her. She's having a baby next week, so um, we'll cover for her when she's gone. But we it reduced our cost dramatically on those contracts. Uh, and we can have it in-house and get a lot more, people have a lot more access to our psychiatric services than they did previously, which has been a big, big deal. So that was one I wanted to highlight there. And then the other, under goal seven, um, the financial stability, uh, new programming that we have done um, that has kind of helped with our financial stability is, is our day program for addictions clients, the wellness program, which you know, Amy, Dob Amy Dobson is our nutrition uh, wellness person, dietitian from, um, that was working at the hospital, works here for us now. And then the other piece is, it's called MAT, and it's, it's medication assisted treatment for people with addiction. So that's like a, a replacement for opioids, Suboxone, Naltrexone, and there's some other medications there that are used. And then the last thing that I would cover in this in our strategic plan is that because of the pandemic, we had to change our model. We never shut down and we never stopped seeing people. 
Uh, we tried to do it in person whenever we could. We did switch to uh, video work a lot more last spring, uh, but we have been easing back into more face-to-face -face with our groups. How did your the last clientele couple of respond to the video? Yeah, generally good. Um, it's not, I will say this, I don't think it's as good uh, as in person. Um, you can't do the groups. Well, you can. I mean, we did do the groups. Yeah, but we, it, yeah, we got purchased tablets so our day treatment group, the addiction clients, could check out those tablets and have that at home so that they could still attend the groups when it, when we had that two-week shutdown. Right. Yeah. It, it does, it, it's usable in that, and I think there's going to be some changes. I think. We're going to have to adapt to that because our models change when you go to video stuff. And, and it's a good thing to have that available for clients that are, say, way out of town. And, and it, it makes a lot more sense than driving two hours to come to an appointment. I think you can mix it up and have them attend some in-person things and do some via video. But I expect there's going to be some more permanent changes such as that that we're going to have to think through in our strategic planning in the upcoming years about how does this change our practice. So. Take the good changes, try to incorporate that, and get rid of the stuff that is, you know, we've had to do that we don't think has been effective. I think that's going to be our approach. Okay, so that is what we've been doing on our strategic plan. So, and then, Yeah. Okay, and then the other thing I just want to, and we'll come back to it at the end, but make sure that we, um, on, the, on the updating of the contract, that we coordinate that with, the county has done that contract, and I suspect they will again, and I don't know if there's any real significant changes to it, um, what I read through it there, it's, I mean, we, we need to take a look at it though, and make sure that it's what we want, and then get it in place prior to July 1. And now, so Amy, or Emily is going to talk about quality assurance and some of the other stuff that we can do. Good. So these are um, the results of our satisfaction surveys from 2020. Um, so part of our contract is um, that we will monitor client satisfaction. Um, so... Um, in 2020, our continuous quality improvement goal was to increase question number three, which is um, how everybody perceived our facilities, uh, to a, an average of four, and number seven, which is our crisis services, to a number to a, an average of four as well. So we do a scale of one to four. One is strongly disagree, and then two is disagree, three is neutral, four is agree, five is strongly agree. Um, so we were able to increase number three to a 4.4, um, and we did, a, like Chris was saying, we did a lot of kind of improvements around the building, um, and it did increase our score on our satisfaction survey, so that was good to see. Um, and then crisis services were at a 3.6 at the end of the year, which was um, a great improvement from, like, the end of the year to the end of the year. It improved a lot. We had some turnover in the crisis position, and I think we got a crisis worker who really is really good at the job. He's a great community partner, um, and he's just able to communicate a lot better than uh, what we had previously. And before we had, it was kind of everybody to call on crisis, so it was kind of our community partners didn't really ever know which crisis worker they were going to get, so it's kind of it didn't. Well, really well. I mean, there wasn't the consistency wasn't as good as having yeah. a single person that is yeah. primarily responsible for it. Yeah. So now our like the hospital and clinic and anybody knows that you know this is the guy you call and and they don't have to you know be wondering what's going on. So um, for 2021, our uh, CQI or continuous quality improvement metric. Uh, goal is to increase question number four, which is did you improve as a result of your services to a 4.5 or higher? And number seven, we decided to keep number seven the crisis services since we didn't meet the goal um, to a four or higher. Um, currently, we are at a 4.48 for did you improve as a result of your services, so we're almost there. And we are up to a 4.5 for crisis right now. So that's promising. 
Um, we had our state site review last fall. Uh, we were recertified for the maximum amount of three years, so our next review will be in 2023, right? Yes, okay. And um, they did make a few suggestions for improvement. One of them is that we uh, purchase a new DUI curriculum to better meet the changing re requirements that the state is putting in. Um, so we purchased their recommended curriculum and we are currently using that. Just curious, what's the gist of the change? Um, I think it was the hours, the amount of hours oh, yeah. of education. I just know it's a different approach. No, no, it's still, um, they want 12 hours of education and yeah, there's, there's a specific amount for individual therapy too. So I, mean, I think that's where it's changed a bit. So, um, and then GOBI, Greater Oregon Behavioral Health Incorporated, did a review of our addictions program. Um, was that January? Yeah. Um, and they had no findings and were really pleased with how our charts looked. So that was uh, very reassuring. Um, and then the state reviewed our assertive community treatment program. We call it ACT. Um, and they usually they do a fidelity uh, score, but since with COVID they couldn't come in person to do the evaluation, so they did a quality assurance assessment, and um, we have been recertified for the maximum of one year. And our, we also had our supported employment review like that, and we have been recertified for one year as well. Um, our access measures, which is something that's also in the contract that we need to monitor. So we have a goal, in 2020, our goal was an average of seven days from the specialty assessment, so when they get their mental health assessment or their addictions assessment, to when they see their primary therapist. In 2020, we were at 8.77 days, and for 2021, we changed the goal of it to an average of five business days instead of just seven flat days, um, so that uh, Monday holidays and the weekends didn't count against us. Um, so right now we're at an average of about seven days, which is pretty good considering we have had a huge influx of um, mental health clients currently, and so we're having a hard time uh, getting them in in a you know as quickly as we would like to. So I was happy to see that we were at seven days and it wasn't actually more than that. So um, as it kind of levels out, I expect that we'll kind of yeah we're going to have to staff up. I, I, yeah, I mean we're 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 recruiting right now. Mm -hmm. And it's frankly worrying because we really would hire two um, master's level therapists. We pay pretty well, um, probably better than average. Our benefits are better than average, but it's people you know making a lifestyle choice about moving to Orange County and doing some are totally in favor of that. And we had some interest. We flew in a guy from Georgia and, and um, you know very nice guy, and but I just. We, I guess as a group, it wasn't just me, but we didn't think it was the best fit for, you know, our, what we were looking for. And so, but we don't get as many applicants as we'd like. We'd really like to have a selection, um, you know, because we really want somebody that's going to work well with our team, and we do have the numbers that we're seeing. We don't want a clinician to have over 30 cases. We have two that are around 31 and 32 right now. And if you get that more than that, and it's hard to have the same attention and focus on a treatment plan as you know when you have fewer. And so that's yeah. We'll work on it. But I mean the, the change in the last three or four months in sort of the sheer number of people coming in to seek services. It's been crazy. So I think in love that might happen. Yeah, I think in March we had 41 new enrollments, and in April I think we had 37. So yeah, and usually I mean, prior to all this, I mean we were an average between 15 and 20 a month. So it's really jumped up there. Um, and then our other access uh, goal that we continually kind of track is how long it takes to get people. Um, into the psychiatrist um, once they're referred. So our goal is that they see the psychiatrist within 30 days of being referred. Um, and like Chris said, with hiring Ashley as our psychiatric nurse practitioner, we have really improved on this metric. Um, so last year, our average was 27 days for adults, and currently we're at 16 days for adults. Um, and for kids, last year we were at 26.6 days, 
and we're currently at 12.5 days. So we're really improving with that. Another thing that we track is no-shows and cancellations. We really try to um, decrease those as much as possible. Research says that if um, somebody's engagement and services drops below 85%, they're really not getting what they need out of therapy. So we really try to keep people engaged so that they are improving um, and reaching their goals. Um, so our goal, is, uh, our goal is to keep no-shows and cancellations at 10% or lower by the end of the year. We're currently at 13 and um, we're working on ways to help our clients engage in treatment more frequently. So. Okay, and so, and also in the contract, and I'm going to hand this out, is to give you guys an audit, and I made three copies of an audit from the previous year, the, the one for this year is just being finished up, so. But our audits are good and clean, and so you guys can have that. And if you would like, um, we talked a little bit about the day treatment program, and very briefly, that is for people with significant addiction issues. A calendar, and I brought a calendar, and you're welcome to have it, though, if you're going to end up I remember going. that from before. Okay, if, if you want again, but it's basically a list of activities that they do each day, and that they're on site much more than the typical person would be, and so. Um, and it, it's about 20 hours a week. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we fit everything here? Oh, yeah. No, that's really good. Okay. <laughs> so there is a new program. It is a small program, uh, and it is brand new, and it's called uh, Intensive In-Home Behavioral Health Treatment. I think. Yes, you got it. Anyway, uh, so what it is for kids, kids and families. And the in-home intensive behavioral health treatment is in-home is the key word here. And so it is services provided to kids and parents working with their school as well, as much as we can either at home or in the school. And so we're really thinking, I want to say like five or less kids, um, that are really at-risk kids that would be eligible for this program. And we're going to start out very small. Uh, there's a basically it looks a lot like what we do anyhow, but it, it's like a wraparound group of people with the the uh, nurse practitioner, the therapist, the school liaison person that we would have uh, that would be working with that family and kid. And it could be therapy in the home. It could be some parent training. It can be a variety of things. Um, there's some specific. I saw there's some specific tools that they use to assess the child to determine what the issues are and how they're going to approach it. We just barely got certified to do it, like, within the last month. Just so, like two weeks. Yeah. I think we got the letter. Yeah. And so um, that will be something that's that's rolling out. Um, there's a little bit of money that the state sends through Gobi that, that finds its way to us to do that. I don't think it's hardly enough to pay for anything. Um, but it doesn't add a huge amount to our cost because it's a lot of what we do anyhow, so you know, I think we'll be able to uh, continue to do that. And the other new program, that, and we've already mentioned it, and it's not as new, but it's the day program, and it's, you know, going, it's been going on for six months or more now, I would say, um, with generally, I would say, good results. Um, I think it's been effective for those people. It's not always effective because it's a big commitment on their part, and they're really choosing a lot of times between putting themselves in violation of their probation by not attending or attending. And some make good choices about that, and some don't. Um, that's that's kind of how it works. Open to take questions. Uh, you guys have any? Say your numbers are up. What what do you think is driving that? What is that? Say your numbers are up. What do you think is driving that? Well, yeah, I think I'm trying to, you know, because I was kind of wondering. If, so now the the pandemic is uh, some of the restrictions are easing and people are a bit more comfortable. Are they just more comfortable going out and getting enrolled, or are they just having an incredible amount of pent up stress, frustration, etc. after this kind of bizarre year that we've all been through and are just frankly not dealing with it very well or struggling to deal with it? Um, so 
I mean, I noticed that when uh, the kids went back to school full time, that we had a huge influx of kids, and I think it's just you know they had been at home for the majority of an entire year, and I mean their social life had to change, their academics had to change, and then all of a sudden like, okay, now you're going to go to school full time. And they're like, okay, okay, how do we put all this together? So I think it, the kids had a hard time processing that. And are they so? Are as a mini appointments, or is it like one or two appointments that kind of help people out and get kind of back on? Track? It's a, so it, that's a really good question it, because we see people in different that have different needs at different times, and so for some people it can be um, you could say maybe over the course of three to four to six sessions you're going to do a very specific thing, and that's all they really want, and that takes care of. For other people, it's going to take you know quite a bit longer, and maybe several months um, that they're you know coming to a weekly therapy appointments. And a lot of times, and this is happening more often, they, in addition to the, the, the traditional therapy appointments that they'll attend, they also might come to one of the other groups. And that's happening as well. So uh, the the time or the length of stay in treatment is very individual um, based on the person. You know what we do? We do an update every ninety days. We set up an initial treatment plan for 90 days. And it says, this is what you want to do and that's accomplish in those 90 days. When you get to that 90 day mark, you need to update that assessment and update the treatment plan and say, well, they met that goal, are we done? Or are we going to continue on and do something else? And what will that look like? But, you know, and this is an observation, you guys are probably, seems to be a fair amount of stress going on right now, right? And, and I, you know, it's just, there is, there's just this kind of climate that, that, that's kind of occurring that I think people are, you know, having to deal with, and it is hard. I mean, it's like, you know, people are very energized about certain things, and very unhappy, frustrated, etc. And I, got, and I do think that that drives a fair amount of, when things break down, you know, they can't navigate <clears throat> how to, how to have these relationships or how to, you know, get their needs met in that scenario, that's when they ask for help and you can see them. So. Thank you. Good update. Any more questions? Good job. Yeah. Huh? Is the uh, gentleman that came at his last uh, time, is he still on the staff? Is that Jason? Jason? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. He's the addiction supervisor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Adam, we will see. Mr. McMullen, planning director, flood plain development standards. We right. should have on the agenda that we called to get on it two months ago. Something like this. Thanks. My bad. Yeah. Did you get that? No. If I don't know that it's a it's not. <laughs> the draft, the, the last final form draft, if you will, of the updated county floodplain development standards, uh, which are currently effective uh, for what we have in our zoning ordinance. Uh, generally, as far as how the process went, we started work on this in late 2019. Uh, the majority of that work uh, was put together in the first uh, evidentiary hearing before the Planning Commission took part in that around that time. We went through the majority of the document, had a, had a great uh, productive meeting on it, and but there was one piece that was missing, and I'll get to that here in a moment, and it related to agriculture buildings. And it was a big, it was a big chunk, it was a big gap in our current stuff, and even, not even really addressed officially at the federal level either. So uh, we played a long waiting game because there's this thing called a pandemic that happened in between. And so uh, it put FEMA and state staff 
in a position where they weren't readily available or even kind of in a revolving door spot, which I'm assuming it happened to a lot of different state uh, offices as well. So DLCD's floodplain administrator uh, position and their support staff was certainly the one that was hit hard under those circumstances. Fast forward to a work session and another, another review hearing in front of the Planning Commission last month, and we have uh, the final draft of our updated floodplain development standard. Uh, so what does this address? Uh, uh, quite plainly and simply, this is all development in the special flood hazard area. So we do have uh, flood insurance rate maps uh, for the entire county. However, these standards are only for those areas that are under our land use jurisdiction. So it's going to be uh, developments outside city limits. And of course, does not account for the, the reservation. So uh, these won't address anything that's inside Burns or Hines, but would address uh, any development within the UGBs of both of those towns, and of course, way out in the county. Um, I have some highlights that I wanted to go over. Uh, the intent of the review hearing isn't necessarily to go through all the lines of code, but to maybe hit some high points and, and maybe address any questions that you may have or comments. So, uh, and really as far as highlights go, it's going to be the difference of what we currently have as effective standards and what the new updated uh, code brings. Right? So the first one is a clear, develop, a clear process for development which require a variance to move forward. When we adopted the effective floodplain standards in the early 2000s, the variance procedure that's outlined in our effective standards uh, had variance requests jump straight to the county court, which is a significant departure from the rest of our land use development code. Uh, a variance request is one that is put uh, for review before our planning commission in 99.9% .9 of uh, scenarios, except for, believe it or not, uh, development uh, in the floodplain. <laughs> so variances in the floodplain are very rare. You don't see them very often, as most development is in an approximate zone, and it's residential. However, there are some instances, we'll talk about agriculture buildings here in a moment, but another one could be uh, a variance request for, say, a, a home or, or a, a infrastructure type of development in a floodway, in which there, uh, there may be some significant differences between what an engineer may perceive as working, working for their client as to what our local code would provide. And so you then take those, uh, those comments and disagreements, put them before the planning commission, and come, try and come to a resolution that makes, the, makes sense for the community. Right. Uh, what the clear process is, is quite frankly getting it back in line with what our zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan has for process, uh, which is for the majority of all variance requests, they would of course go to the planning commission, they would review them and we'd move forward. Uh, specific process for wet flood proofing agriculture buildings. So agriculture buildings are not called out separately in our current floodplain development standards. And up until the last few years, there, haven't really, there hasn't really been a need to do that. Uh, we just looked at them as non-residential buildings. However, uh, after a recent community assistance visit, which is basically an audit of your floodplain development program by FEMA and the state, one of the major shortcomings that uh, we had, I suppose, in their eyes, uh, in our floodplain program was the development of ag buildings that were not elevated and instead wet flood proof. And what that means generally is that they're, they're put on or slightly above ground level and they're made to have flood openings to allow flood waters to move through the building so that you don't build up that hydrostatic pressure on your walls, right? Pretty common, actually. However, uh, FEMA and the state said that requires a variance procedure, which we had never done before. So after that visit, of course, uh, we started implementing that, but there weren't any clear procedural ways to make that happen. So as far as ag buildings go, we wanted to specifically address it, but also be consistent with what the state and FEMA had put together so that we didn't have compliance issues 
with those two entities. Uh, and so what you have is that specific uh, way to address uh, variances for those ag buildings that that aren't, you know, it's just not feasible to, to locate on fill and, you know, cutting to the chase. A lot of our ag buildings are accessory, accessory buildings that are thousands of square foot in size, but are very simple buildings. They're shops. Or, and so then sometimes they don't even have a, a, a concrete slab for flooring. They just have gravel. But in order to bring in all that fill to, to lift that building one to two feet off the ground is very much cost prohibitive. So instead, we want to provide an alternative for wet flood proofing without having to have an engineer get involved. So that's what the new standards do. Uh, they provide for that opportunity. On top of that, because it is most likely the most prevalent type of non-residential development that we have, that specific variance request or process for an ag building would be done administratively. So instead of having to go to the planning commission for a variance for an ag building, you go to staff, which I think provides an expedited way to get ag buildings up. And other, in most circumstances, it would otherwise just be another roadblock for getting a, a structure that would normally be pretty simple to put up in our community. So I'm trying to save time and resources for folks in a way that's consistent with the state and the, the feds regulation. And then the last highlight is a specific call out, which we don't have for residential and non commercial. Or sorry, commercial and non-residential structures. So the state's free board, if you will, their uh, the minimum that you have to elevate the lowest floor on your residences is one foot above base flood elevation. So that magical uh, projection of where the the 100-year flood plain uh, flood water height is going to be, uh, you have, you need to be a foot above that. And sometimes that's two feet. In some rare circumstances, it's above that. In many others, it's going to be below two feet. It just depends on where that base flood elevation is projected to. So for homes, it's pretty simple. And we call that out in our code right now. However, for those commercial and non-residential structures, we don't have that identified. So many communities decide they want to have a certain height above that base flood elevation as a required minimum and others don't, what we decided as a planning commission was the most fitting for our community was to have the, that requirement be at or above the base flood elevation. Essentially, providing the option to the developer or the landowner on these types of structures. Depending on what their circumstances are and what, uh, what they foresee as far as the needs for insurance and future flood plan protection, I wanted to make sure that we provided some flexibility instead of saying, well, we could, instead of saying, you have to be a foot or you have to be a certain distance. The requirement is that is that minimum, but it's an important one we felt to provide that flexibility for under those circumstances. Do you know if anywhere else does that same thing, just says at the baseline or above, or are we, are we kind of the only ones proposing that. No, we're not the only ones for sure. We're, um, we're not standing out on that. Um, it's pretty common. But it is also common for some communities that feel that they have a certain maybe different type of flooding circumstance than us to have a, maybe just like residences, a one-foot free board. So that is it in a nutshell. I've talked a lot, but um, let me know if you have any questions or comments on it. I appreciate the work on that. Brandon and I visited that the other day, and you know, I feel like he's really done a lot for the county to get us where we should be. You know, things that I think people maybe even assumed were in place before that, that weren't, and now they are officially in place. So I appreciate your work on that. And I think you are in the uh, industry that has some of the most bureaucracy of mm -hmm. county departments. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. I'm not going to disagree. It's challenging. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. Pre appreciate the way you uh, went over the highlights. And I understand it. So it's a just a motion. How does that work? I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not really a resolution or ordinance. If, uh, if I may. Yes. This would. <laughs> 
this is uh, this action is this is a land use review hearing, even though we didn't open it up that way necessarily. Uh, in local legislative matters, to me, land use law, we do have to provide an opportunity for comment if there is anyone that, that wants to do that. Of course, it's been noticed. You can see in the staff report uh, the different noticing uh, requirements that we met uh, and the timelines uh, that were put together for the Planning Commission review hearings. Uh, this hearing date was uh, put on our county website and put in the newspaper twice. Uh, for those who are interested in participating. Uh, after comment, of course, you can deliberate or do whatever however procedure you'd like. Um, but uh, the decision would be uh, for a motion to approve these changes. I would then come back to the county court with a, a draft ordinance for you to approve. Anybody here to comment on that? Brandon was excited when he saw Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got the heads up. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I, I would have been sweating bullets a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I would move to approve the motion to approve the final number 19-17, adopting newly updated floodplain development standards for Harney County. Move the second to approve local file number 19-17 and recommend the proposed floodplain development standards for consideration of the Harney County Court. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. You're good to go. I'll get to work on the draft ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, Thank while you. Brandon's here, I, I have a concern. It's in a different matter. It's not what he just made a comment on. Uh, Better not be about my poker play. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm not> that. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I ran into a serious issue here. I know it's Brandon's probably run into it before, but it, it's starting to concern me now. <clears throat> uh, we applied to drill another well in the county and went through the proper steps, had it, everything uh, set up so that it would be properly done with this deal that's going on with the water thing. And uh, the state has determined that they're going to use a GPS system that is not uh, the same as our county survey systems. It's one that the BLM did off of a GPS, and that is not on the lines, on hardly any of the property lines in this county anymore, which means Nothing to the state water resource department, which is who we're dealing with, but that's what they're going to recognize where all these wells are located through these GPSs, and some of them are going to show that they're not even on property that we own because of this system. And now it's confusing. I, well, it doesn't take much to be off. No, no. In fact, uh, this really surprised. On this well that he uh, GPS to mark the location of the well, it turned out it wasn't even in our property. It's close to the line, of course. Uh, but as it turned out on the GPS, it wasn't in our property. It wasn't on our property. And as a matter of fact, the house we live in is not on our property, nor the hay shed that we have is on our property. Jerry, so um, did our tax maps show something different than what their mapping did? Yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So I have a, there's the whole thing. You know, so you're not the only one. Um, we've, we've seen a couple of these prop up in the last couple of weeks. Um, I have a suggestion, and I haven't had a lot of time to think of it, so it's a little off the cuff. Yeah. But if we could make a formal request to the water master that they utilize the tax mapping system, which is arguably the most accurate, given we have the best available information for our own land ownership and our own cartographer. It's a pretty good argument to utilize that over other information that may not be locally sourced, like ours is. And the state, the state doesn't care whether who owns the property or what, the water resource department. All they care about is where the lo well is located. But when it shows up as not on your property, then it becomes a situation that that's a big yeah. deal, especially on the legal side, right? So, yeah. so. 
let's not notify water resources. That is our, we want to, we, that is our task and our intent. Can you work on that type of letter for me? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Letter yeah. I can draft it up for you. <laughs> yeah, can we draft that up? Let's sort of notice that we need to. I think it only makes sense. I'll make sure that, you know, our local water master sees the audit, but then it goes clear to Tom. And our house, I mean, our house is still our house and all that. Good it is? Stuff. I tried to move it. When you weren't looking. I, well, I know the map guy. I tried to move that thing. I mean, this, this, <laughs> this was a concern to our well driller, and thank God he did. I mean, we were over on the coast and, and had three days into a seven day vacation. He calls us, says, This is the situation, and I need to be either moving on or we need to get this settled or whatever. And I'm thinking, uh, here we go. There was, this there was that vacation. Yeah. My wife was upset on the whole deal, so I'm going to send her. Well, okay, we better get on this. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. But it is a situation that I, you know, I foresee lots of problems if there isn't something, and I didn't know where to go to start. I, I assumed I was going to talk to you just on Saturday night, or whatever, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But but anyway, uh, Thank you for yeah, yeah and I'm not the only one involved in this deal. Yeah, we've got others come up. And, and the water resource again don't care what they all they want to know is where that well is located. And there and the BL the, these are BLM GPSs that they run in this county, and they will show if you bring them up they'll show a line on a map that's different than the property lines that we normally have have chosen. At least get the conversation started on that so we know exactly what they're trying to work from too because it's a little cloudy when we were trying to work with on jerry's property so So we're going to wait on the supplemental budget. That's, yeah. 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 That's something we can do after we get to see. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of us. Come on in. Oh, there's a gentleman, though, stand up over here. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, two there. <laughs> there's, there's two more chairs over here for three. three actually, what, what's going on? Come in. Well, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. Stand back. How many is that? Twenty or no? Five. Six. 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 Do you want to say something? Okay, it seems uh, two years ago we had Will Brown. Uh, about two years ago we had signature to make this a sanctuary. Right? We thought we should have done that. The commissioners just voted it in. So now you have more people, and I would think that you can just vote it in. Is that right? It's not the, the same exact ordinance. Um, if you look at the text of it, there has been some changes to the text of this one versus that previous one, just so you are aware. So we need more signature? No, no, no. 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 But just to make you aware, it's not the same exact document. We feel there's maybe been some improvements. So what are we going to do here? You're here to show your support, board, and encourage us to, <coughs> to adopt it. We're open. We're going to each express our <coughs> thoughts and yeah. how we see where, where it goes today. Thank you. Okay. 
can we, uh, would there be an opportunity to ask after, after you've kind of spoken? But I kind of want to know what the, still the path forward is. So I guess that's. What is your question? Well, yeah. my question is can I ask a question after you both speak? I think you'll probably get your question answered. Okay. <laughs> because path forward is part of the process. Perfect. To make comments first. I like to hear yours because I don't know yours. I don't know. like to hear both yours. Well, um, I think that all of us have done a lot of uh, personal homework on this. Uh, as everybody's talked about, there's a lot of other counties that have taken time and um, entertained uh, Second Amendment sanctuary ordinances. You know, as we've uh, dug into that. We have noticed that the texts on those do vary. And so um, the text that this court has considered came from the Yamhill County text with some changes that make it specific to Ryan County. So that is the version that we're currently working from that is being proposed today. Um, and I think that that's important. I think my biggest concern with this document um, as it's being proposed also be put on the ballot later is that the citizens that are passionate about it have actually read the text. I think that it's easy to um, to get passionate about the Second Amendment because I believe we all are passionate about that and do so. But I want to make sure that people know the exact language that is being considered because that is what would be decided in the, the court of law if it was to be challenged. And so I know that we've all read the text, um, but I want to make sure that the public is also engaged in that process because I don't want you to be asking us to do things that you don't actually know yourselves. And so I, I believe that it is you know, our duty to make sure that we are very familiar with the text of this document and that we feel comfortable with that text as your representatives. But then as this moves forward, this would be a first reading if the court entertains that, then there would also be a second reading. And prior to that second reading, that would give the public time to dive into that text. And that, that's what I would really appreciate from the public is to make sure that you too have done your due diligence to know what is actually within the, the words of the document. It is on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've also sent it out um, far and wide mm -hmm. on e email attachments to anybody who wanted it and uh, sent it out in general um, to the uh, uh, contacts I have. So it's, it's, it's been the start of distri distribution of it has already begun. Thank you. Thank you. So I think people think I'm opposed. <coughs> None of us are opposed. None of us agree with what's going on in Salem. It is a grab. Um, but as Commissioner Sheldon said, it's, it's education. The public knows what it means if we put it in place. Because there's still going to be the, it's still be questionable if the sheriff or the DA can uphold this. Because they, they also take oaths to uphold the laws of the state of Oregon. And we can't, that's the one point, is we can't override the laws of the state. It makes a great stand, and we're all behind that. I'm behind that. Um, the Columbia County one, where the AG got involved, um, so, they're, so at the expense of the county is, is that they, they're they were going after court costs against the county. So I think this opens this up too. So on the fiscal side of me and the budget officer side of me, you know, that's a concern. We don't have any pockets in our county. So just just know that. But it, it could cost us some money. Is it the right thing to do to stand up against Salem and all the country? Yeah, it is. It is. That's, that's not the question. It's, so that's, 
you hear my hesitancy, it's, it's for those reasons, not for the right thing to do. And, you know, where does it go? Uh, you know, as others get challenged or shot down, we can, I don't think it's a good for us to fall back. I mean, if we make, if we make the decision to, to put it in, sign the ordinance and put it in place, I think we can stand there. It could come at expense. It could come at, it could come to a challenge for the DA and the sheriff and the law. That's just, it's just some of the, I think, knowledge that needs to be out there. Because we don't have the full authority to override state law. That's, that's what keeps coming back. So it's a statement. It's the right statement. But there's a, there's a worry. So after the attorney fees, he said, that being said, I agree it would make sense to see how the Columbia County case turns out before passing a similar ordinance. And then as spoken about earlier, it might be too late, but the county could try to appear in the Columbia County case to submit a brief in support of the ordinance if it wants. We're trying to narrow the court's review to a conflicting statute, such as the reason firearms storage bill. Um, so he kind of suggests that we could we could make a motion to table, which I know nobody wants to hear. But if we officially do a motion to table, that means it's always on the agenda until the Columbia County kind of plays out, and then we take action. Or we take action today. Just a couple of our. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment on that. Um, your concern with um, uh, this being uh, uh, enforceable at our county level, I disagree with you. I, I believe our sheriff has the uh, authority to enforce or not enforce uh, uh, over the top of uh, state uh, law enforcement. Um, the second thing it is, um, as we've seen, there are a number of district courts around the state that have uh, looked at the same language with just slight tweaks. Some of the judges have said, yeah, that's fine. Some of the judges like ours, and if you'll read the, uh, the letter from our attorney, uh, erroneously said, no, it's, 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 not, it's not valid. Um, so one thing that this does, it, it puts us in with um, a set of counties that are going to take this to the, if it goes to the state, and it is going to go to the state, to, to make a uniform standard by which these ordinances are, are adopted so that we don't have one judge over here saying, well, no, I don't like this, because we all know judges all over the state are run politically. There's, it's no, there's no question about that. I mean, you can, you can even you know, do warm and fuzzy about, well, is it, they're upholding the law by the, by the way they think the Constitution reads, but... Bottom line is, there's politics running every every judge in every jurisdiction in in this state. So this would give us an opportunity to level that playing field so that each there would be a set of guidelines so each district judge would have would know what, whether this is valid or not. And I would like to be on the side to make uh, of our of our county being um, uh, act, proactive enough to, to you know to to be in the, that team that's going to be a winning team. At, at the end of the end, so um, I think it's I, I think it's our time to uh, develop our sovereignty uh, within the county, and I think it's important that you understand that um, our county is sovereign in, in many ways. Um, the law, um, not not you know, not given to the United States, is given to the states or to the people. So I think we are the people. We have the equal right to. Uh, administer our laws and, and create our laws here is, is equal to the, what, the, what the state has. So I don't think we're subservient to the state. I think we're equal to the state. Can I make a comment on that? And just to go on, I, I, I assume the sheriff department probably gets funds somewhat from the state. That's not happening. That, no no grants, no anything that... They have the cops. 
the federal cost grant they just initiated. Other than that, it's all, it's all county. Government. It's all county. All right. That usually it's attached to some of those kind of deals that we can't. We feel that we can't get away from them because we are getting funds from them. If that's not the case, sure. I I think that what Tim is saying is that our sheriff has the ultimate power to make the decision in this county. And it's not been that way in the past. And we get to thinking, well, that isn't the way it is. But it, it, if you get to it, I think that's the way it is. And if we're not getting money where we're going to get, the department's going to get hurt for some reason because of funds being cut or anything, usually you get on that kind of deal, then you can't get away from them because you need those funds to operate. <clears throat> but it sounds like we're starting our process of, of being sovereign in this county, being self-dependent, going from there. <clears throat> in, in relation to the sheriff's office, <laughs> well, it is general fund funded. And there should, there should be no other issue at this point in this second. So many other state funds that who knows if they would try to go after. Well, uh, our, and you we have a $32 million mm -hmm. budget and we only raised $3 million here in our taxes. You can see how much federal uh, that, That's where, into. that's, yeah, follow the money. You know yeah, what right. happens. I, and and the, unfortunately, we're in that situation. And, and we have to start somewhere in mm -hmm. that situation to get away from that, too. I don't know how you do that kind of thing. <laughs> if I had a suggestion, I'd be shouting it out. But uh, I, I do know that the, the money is a problem. I have a quick question. Okay, so um, with the concern of a, a lawsuit, I'm just wondering, um, we were talking about this eventually going to the, the, the citizens for a vote. Would, um, do you think that it would still be as vulnerable to a lawsuit if it was something that the citizens voted on? Just testament. Just testament. It takes a little bit of pressure off the three of us to say, hey, the whole county is behind it. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And if it does cost this county funds. It has the same standing in law, no matter how it goes on to vote. Okay. Um, you and then me. Pete, well, yeah, just food for thought, too, is we have been in phone contact with uh, Veen, what's her last name? Klein. Klein. Um, uh, NRA. NRA Northwest Director. And she's working with, with trying to inform us and keep us on track with going on, uh, working with maybe coming up with NRA funds for issues like this. NRA support for issues like this. And then we've got, we've had, we've had some word from legislators in, in Salem that have kind of looked into this, and we don't see, I mean, there could be a suit, but it's, it's they, they don't have, they can't go anywhere with it. Oh, yeah, who would, would sue my thing? Well, if the attorney general, that, that's we, what I was referring to, I want the attorney general. We general's have, we involved, have. They could come back on us. Not, I'm not talking, when, I, when you say lawsuits, I'm not talking private into it. I don't, it's the not that it can be totally ruled out either. Right, but, I, but I'm referring to it as the right, right, right. Okay. After, okay, sorry. Yeah, I, that's obvious. But the, the, something else that if, if it did get to that point, we have had conversation in our public meetings about what we can do for funds ourselves, you know, in, in the way of, of trying to raise some, you know, but we, we, we just got to we have to play that card when it gets there. Um, I'm kind of losing my train here. Uh, Oh, there was a gentleman in here that, that stood up and, and, and he, he kept saying, they, who's they, they, who's they, is they going to do this, is they, you know, this guy right here answered his question in one statement. He said it's, it's the legislation that's now in control. And that, that kind of answers a lot of those they questions. And, and I know a guy that he's forever saying, well, well you know what they say. Well, who is they? Because he wants to know every time you bring a statement up like that. You know, and I kind of listened to that, and he walked in the door, and bang, first statement out of his mouth. Is his, he says, it's the legislation that, that's in power now. And that's, that's kind of what we're kind of bucking heads against is the legislation in Salem, you know, and we've got to find a way to survive this. And, and we have been very blessed just this day with some people that says, you know, we're going to start coming. We're going to start getting on board with you guys. You know, we're, we've been pushing hard to try to get more than a half a dozen or a dozen people to come to our meetings to help us to do the things we need to do. We're talking signatures uh, today again, you know. Uh, Ted brought up, you know, we may need signatures. 
these are the people that we got to get the help. And, and, and I was just thrilled, you know, to say, hey, you know, we got, we got some help today. You know, and, and these people that came up here, and you guys, I understand your passion, and I understand exactly exactly what you're saying, you know. There's always the flip side of the coin that you, that you know and understand a little more fully than us. I've read Sappo, but I've not read Sasso. I, I need to do that to see what changes that may affect me. You know, because until this stuff starts affecting these people, they're staying home, but you see what happened today. Something happened, and they said, well, that could really affect me. Here they come. And I didn't, I didn't expect to see a crowd like that, but yet again, we, we felt helpless because we didn't have an answer for them either. You know, they're, they're saying, well, you Republicans. You know, well, you're Republican too. Well, yeah, I know. Well, but, but we are all one, you know, and it's going to take boots on the ground work to get this done. We, you know, we're not going to, there's no hero going to come out and finance it and save everybody. You know, we got to do it ourselves. And we're prepared to do that. And we're prepared more than ever to work with the county court. But we're going to work with the county court that we know support us. And, and we just love that thought and that attitude. Well I'm done. <laughs> well, I've got to say, this has been on my mind for, you know, 15, 16 months, a lot. Not just when it occasionally is brought up in a court setting. And I'm one of these people that when I'm thinking about stuff, I type it and then I print it. So uh, I'm going to share with you thoughts I wrote last night or today that I would change if I hear or anything today that you know, I needed to change in my comments. But uh, I hope it's not too long, but it'll kind of get everybody on board. You know, as you know, the Harney County Court is being asked to enact a Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, SASO, in order to stand up against government overreach and restrictive new gun laws from outside the county, state and federal, that are seen as unconstitutional and infringe on Second Amendment rights. The county court members have each expressed to each other during open deliberations that we all want this to go to the voters of Harney County. We definitely want it to go to the voters of Harney County and we are planning to refer it to the ballot for the next regularly scheduled election, which is a year from now, a year from now, May 2022. But the matter at hand today is to decide whether or not today we're going to use our authority on your behalf to adopt a SASO now in order to provide sanctuary from enforcing the new emerging and future gun laws that we see as unconstitutional. So the referral is not on the agenda today. That will come later. We're not su seeking to simultaneously pass an, possibly pass an ordinance today and then and refer it to the ballot today as well. The referral will come later closer to the election day so that whatever goes before the people will be the best version possible because you can't change it once you refer it. And that we would be able to make any adjustments needed due to any legal developments and rulings and things that are apt to occur between now and then. So in other words, the county court intends to refer a SASO to the ballot at a later date, but today we are here to address whether or not we want to adapt, adopt a SASO on the people's behalf to provide Second Amendment protection to the best of our ability now. You've heard other counties uh, have done so in, in brief uh, review. Three Oregon counties have passed SASOs. Umatilla and Columbia counties were by vote of the people in November, and the Yamhill County's commissioners enacted it on behalf of their people in April of this year. Columbia counties is subsequently the county uh, commissioners of Columbia County initiated the first legal action so far, and that's the one you're hearing about, is a petition for validation to the circuit court as a way to seek legal clarification and validation preemptively prior to anticipated law, uh, legal challenges that um, will probably come. And so it's going to be very interesting to see that ruling. How soon it may come is unknown. It may take 8 to 12 months. It could come earlier. It could take later. And uh, Judge Reynolds mentioned, you know, and, and other people, the state attorney general. So the state attorney general appears in the proceeding to protect the state's interest in enforcing state statutes. So again, 
this litigation is pending, and it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Um, the Columbia County Ordinance is not identical to Harney County's. Again, theirs was modeled more after the one we looked at, though not exactly um, in January of 2020, and the one of today has, has some differences um, for Harney County. Um, so the county court has spent considerable time reviewing various of these ordinances, keeping up with developments, learning from those Oregon counties who have an already enacted SASOs. We've held discussions and consultation with the Harney County Sheriff, the District Attorney, County Legal Counsel during meetings, work session, and executive session. Having taken the lead on the detailed reviews of the various versions and upon comments made by our County Council, I believe that Harney County SASO before us today is the best version yet. Hypothetical questions about implementation challenges and questions about how the future legal rulings may go, those were, you know, talked about in our discussions. However, despite there being no absolute answers to those uh, questions and concerns that were voiced, because it is truly new legal territory, there were no showstoppers at this point. What about the costs and burdens of litigation? Litigation should be anticipated, planned for, but not feared. What is the price of freedom? Each of the members of the county court, we want to send this to the voters, we're basically saying we're going to do that. At, but the next two dates for these elections are May 2022 and November 2022. That's a long time. And that means no opportunity for enactment for at least a year without the county court passing an ordinance on behalf of the people in the meantime. Harney County Sasso has taken the best from the other ordinances and added a sunset clause for it to expire December 31st, 2022, which will provide enough time for referral to either the May primary or November general ballots. And while the county court would retain the authority to extend or rescind it if we felt we needed to, the sunset date is there to reinforce movement to the ballot for a vote of the people. Um, fortunately, at the time period between now and when it goes to the ballot a year from now or more, does provide ample opportunity for the people of Kearney County to become knowledgeable and informed on this very important matter. We want you to read it. We want you to understand it. It's not always easy to read these things. We want people to be informed to know what they're voting for. At this point, however, the county court is in a position to vote on your behalf until the next election because unfortunately, we are well informed on it. We've been working on it. We've spent some time and attention on it. So I believe that on your behalf, we are informed. Um, some of the people that are worried that this is going to really change the landscape for gun laws uh, need to know that this ordinance has exceptions. It, it's not going to, any um, not enforcing some new gun laws, it's not going to apply just like the old gun laws. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not going to apply to convicted felons. They still don't get a, a pass. It does not pertain or affect in any way the prosecution of any crime for which the use of or possession of a firearm is an aggravating factor or enhancement to an otherwise independent crime. It does not permit or otherwise allow possession of firearms in state or federal buildings or courthouses. It does not apply to nor prohibit the enforcement of firearm regulations that were in place as of February 1st of this year. So we drew a line, it's a broad approach to the new stuff. All the stuff we do now, all the stuff in place on background checks, and that stays, okay? The sunset or expiration, it, as I said, it, it expires on December 31st, 2022, unless rescinded, extended, or referred to and approved by the electors, you guys. The reservations I've heard about enacting this ordinance today include the fiscal impacts to the county, uh, should litigation occur or we need to be involved in litigation. But should we stay away from or delay action just because there may be litigation, because it's uncertain and uncharted territory, 
because there are costs and work associated with litigation that may ensue? I say no. Should we wait it out and delay action in order to let the legal challenges go forward, go farther than they are today in other counties first, to see what happens, which may take months or years, and leave everything the way it is now? In Harney County, I say no. I have received many communications from Harney County people urging that the county court adopt the SASO. I have received one request not to do so. I didn't solicit, these are just ones that came to me aside from the stuff today and the people today. And I want to thank everybody who, who did communicate because the input is greatly appreciated. But I believe the Harney County Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance before us is needed and needed now. I don't believe litigation or the prospect of litigation and its cost should be feared and avoided at all costs. I don't believe we sit and wait for more events to evolve before we act, because more events are going to evolve. We have done our due diligence on behalf of our people. I did not have a restless night last night. I know what I think based on all the work we've done at this point. Why shouldn't counties be allowed to legislate for sanctuary from state and federal laws regarding Second Amendment protections in the same manner that the state legislated sanctuary from federal laws regarding immigration? How can a state in its constitution be allowed to infringe on federally guaranteed rights by specifying and detailing specific limits and restrictions on types, quantities, storage, transport, carry, and use of arms, ammunition, and accessories? Why now? Some people say, well, you don't have to do it right now. Why now? I believe the right to bear arms is under direct, intense, increasing, relentless, and immediate attack now at the state and federal levels. We must do our best for Harney County to do what we can to strengthen our commitment to Second Amendment protections, which we proclaimed in our 2019 Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance. The county court has a path and the legislative role to enact ordinances we believe serve the needs of our people. SASOs have been developed and reworked by attorneys and judges in this basic form for at least two years and have been passed in three Oregon counties so far and are at a good stage for enactment. Again, no perfection, nothing is, but it's in a good, solid stage. The timeline between now and the next opportunity for a ballot measure is too long to go without action. Our people have asked us repeatedly to act, and we can and should, we can do so responsibly, and we should do so today. So, I would move to adopt ordinance number 2021-01 in the matter of declaring the Second Amendment sanctuary in Harney County. Second that motion. Moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 2021-01 in the matter of declaring a second amendment sanctuary in Harney County. Do we need to is do there a, a motion? Is there a motion to read by title only or do we want to read it in full? It's my understanding that ORS allows us to read by title only if the three of us would all agree that we are very familiar with it. Um, but we can read it. I would move by title, but prepared. I'm to read it. By title only. By title only. So any further discussion? They are not. They, they don't see how they can follow it at this point in their rules. But you know, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that they again. Don't, they don't see how they can follow the intent in their rules and in their oaths. And I need to say something because this but, was a thought that occurred to me as on that topic is I mean, we all, our sheriff and all our deputy, I mean, they say we're not going to take your gun, we're not going to enact onerous things. And I, I tend to believe them. But actually, despite their assurances, they would, without something like this, have no legal standing not to. No legal standing not to. This provides a legal standing. If it, if it serves as a dilemma for them, I understand that. 
but without it, they absolutely don't have a leg to stand on for the state statutes. May I make, make a comment? Um, the question of the sunsetting and uh, putting it on the ballot, I think, I think that's, I, I ran that past our attorney and he said that was fine. It's, and it's a matter of uh, county preference. Uh, the county wants to do that. Um, it doesn't change it. And, and one of the things that uh, the immediacy of this uh, and the importance of the immediacy of this is that um, probably pretty much everybody in this room, when 554 is signed by the governor, it automatically makes almost everyone in this room uh, a criminal. And we have to have protection for that. Not from, not, I think our officers, I've talked to enough of them that they don't want, they don't want to enforce it. They're not being asked to do anything extra. They're asked to, to stand off until there is a situation which involves a criminal activity that brings in uh, their, their enforcement. They're just not going to, you know. But from the outside, we could have people come from the outside. If, if, our, if our county uh, sheriff does not stand up, and my, my, by the way, he, you know, he does not work for the county court. He works for you and I, all of us here. We, 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 we hire him by electing him every four years, and we put him in office at our pleasure. So he has to, uh, he has to uh, be accountable to us, not to the county court. I think that's an important uh, um, distinction that needs to be made. He needs to work with the county court, but he doesn't, he doesn't answer to the county court, and the court, county court doesn't run him. So the law runs what he, what he does. And so I think our sovereignty, I think, will stand up in court, and I think we have a very good chance of, of unifying uh, these protections across the state, and I want to be part of that, and I, want to, I don't want any way to see any one of our people in this community who have maybe have, have an enemy somewhere in this community have, get, a, get, a, get a whistleblower on them and say, well, he's not got his guns put away, or his ammunition isn't stored, is stored with his guns. I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see that conversation. <coughs> this will buy us the time, and I, I agree that People should have, they should vote on this. I think that's a good thing. So it doesn't change legally. It doesn't change our protections. So I think I, I think the sunset clause is not something to worry about as long as we don't have a gap of, of coverage in there. And I think uh, as well with the DA, he's also an elected official. Mm -hmm. yes, so yeah, keep that in mind that you, as voters, decide who your DA and sheriff are, mm -hmm. just as you decide who your county court is. And so we're doing this on behalf of the voice of the people, and that is our jobs. And so I think that you all need to keep in mind that you as voters hold the power. Um, participation in elections is, is more important now than ever, and I think people need to reiterate that to their neighbors and you know to themselves that participation in the process is key, and we can't sit idly by. Um, what has gone on in our legislature this year is appalling. Um, and I won't see the citizens of Harney County <laughs> made out to be like Tim just mentioned, you know, that we are now the criminals. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is really the heart of, of acting on this now, is our neighbors and friends should not be criminals. I won't be a criminal under the current law that pushed through our legislature through a very bad procedural process. It wasn't supposed to be heard until June 15th. They shoved the vote from May 4th to May 5th overnight. That is wrong. A legislative body should never do that. There was no process for public comment on that prior. And so this is speaking out against what has gone on in our legislative assembly in this session. Back to the funding question. The DA is, uh, not everybody knows, the DA is funded by the state, not by the county. That's true, county dollars mostly, according to AFC. Wow. So the salary does not come out of any of our funding. No, it well, comes so through the state, but the, by a county yeah. funds for the state. Just, just, yeah. just side note, so y'all are their staff, but not the DA. Staff that is accounts. I, I just want <coughs> the, the sheriff and the DA have to swear that they uphold the laws of the Constitution of the state? Everybody takes the same thing. Okay, but it also says that you have to uh, uphold the citizens. I mean, you are responsible to the citizens of the county. 
So uh, th 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 there's a little confusion, I understand, in that part. Is there something we need to do to say that this is the way it's supposed to be? Or I mean, what I'm, I, we always see this power coming the wrong way. It's coming down the chain instead of going up the chain. Where's the process we change that part? Right here. Yeah. This is part of it, right? right but we also have to have the confidence that the guy that's in charge of things is he is in charge of things. If he's thinking that he's going to get in trouble because he doesn't uphold what we as the citizens uh, prefer, obviously he can be voted out. That's one way to change that process. But in the meantime, the next one coming in is thinking the same way that he's going to have to obey the state laws as opposed to the people in the county. And I, and I mean, it's a vicious cycle until we get that part of it changed. So as citizens, do we need to talk to the sheriff and kind of say, you know, we're behind him? Uh, what, is, what is it that we need to do as citizens to get that part of it changed? I, I don't think we have a chance in heck with the DA if he's getting salary from state. Well, the, the thing that influences the DA, and this is something he mentioned in, in comment to us, is when he looks at a jury pool, if the voice of this county speak towards an issue like this, he also has to look at that as mm -hmm. is even valid to bring to a jury. And so, so he, has he has some discretion that this Prosecute kind of action it. and the ballot action that will precede this mm -hmm. would play into he looks at his he, he, better, he better support the people of the county, that's all I can say. But anyway, there's a motion on the floor, is there? Yeah. So we're like, keep letting the public comment out. Um, I will also say, well, then, as the DA did say, the 554 is written so poorly that there's no way you can you could uphold shot that. Down. Yeah. And I'll, I'll use to... one article, for example, is if I sold a pistol to you, Tim, today with a trigger lock on it, following the rules, in two years, that pistol is used in some type of shooting, they can come back on me. There's no way you can uphold that, enforce that type of So, sign um, Okay, so back to the motion on the floor. Do we want to change this first one to go by title only? And then, and then the motion to the on the thing. Um, which way do we need that to cart before the board? It says, if no member of the governing body present, present at the meeting requests the ordinance be read in full, it doesn't have to be. I, I, I read it as both meetings. So just, so just make your motion by title. By title. All right. So I move to adopt ordinance number 2021-01 in the matter of declaring a Second Amendment sanctuary in Harney County by title only. Second. Move and second. I guess that's already there. A couple numbers here. Move and second to approve ordinance number 2021-01 matter of declaring a second amendment sanctuary in Harney County uh, by title only. All in favor, say by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Hearing none, the ordinance passes. And then you'll do it again. We have to do the second. Let's do it again. Right. So the, the next quarter. Yep. And I, does, do. can it be by title only both times? Yeah. Or okay. Yeah. If we need to make come back and make cover comment again in the second time around? Or? Yeah. Unless you've got, you got, you got all the people that are banned that we passed first. <laughs> <laughs> it's highly unlikely that it would be different from that when you're okay. passing an ordinance. So, so I do I date today? Do I Thank date you for your input. It'll be on record today, but I would make the ordinance next really excellent comments. Mm -hmm. so, so, so or so make the ordinance next time. Because it'll be a final one. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 So I will. Telegram. Thank you all.
screwed up on the dates. So don't worry about that. Just sign it. Yeah, because we're in. Well, because really it's got to show. Okay. It's got to show both flags. Like, so in fact, when I was looking at it, I was going May 19th, June 2nd, no, and include that date. I was like, the third date needs to be the, the second date. So this, this one could would be. be today, that would be yeah. June, so the, this is what I. I, I tried reading ORS and just to look yeah. for if we did it today, then and the second reading second. were then, then it's 90 days after that that it, it's then effective, it's effective. Right. to be August So you can date it today for the first signature because the region, the next, yes. yeah. these, these are the dates That's right. that I penciled so in. This is may... my understanding of how it would roll if we passed it. Yeah, today. because you can sign it today, you just you voted the first time to sign it today. The first this is the first reading, it has to be a second reading, and then 90 days after that. Right. Yeah. Second. So that would be the August date. Second. Yeah, August date would be the August date. Yes. August thirty first. But you can just yeah. wait. So what should we put for this date of this date? So the today, because it's the first day you signed it. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then the reading. <coughs> yeah. We'll still have some other work on the agenda. Yeah. You can't go to lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. 36 years. <laughs> if he knows what's good for him, he'll keep saying how patient he is, right? Thanks for the coffee, by the way. We'd like to thank the taxpayers of Harney County. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the better coffee? It is. <laughs> it is so much better. <laughs> Judge Runnels realized that the bitter, awful coffee that has always been in the has kind of check, checked around why, and there was no reason Never to Never found one person that liked it. <laughs> well, we had a refrigerator full of creamers to cover up the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why are we trying to <laughs> choke down this? <laughs> okay, let's go back up to new business. Item A. Met resolution 2021 way in the matter of adopting a supplemental budget and making appropriations to the school board. We kind of discussed this in in budget. So this one, we just under budget. We budget one hundred thousand, and three hundred seventy thousand has passed through this fund. And this is only to acknowledge that we should more than ten percent. I'd like to make a motion in the matter of adopting a supplemental budget and appropriations, County School Fund Number Two Eight Zero, Resolution Number Two Zero Two One Dash Zero Eight. Uh, $270,535. I second. I move and second and approve resolution number 2021-08 in the matter of adopting the supplemental budget and making appropriations to county school fund number 280 and the increase of $270,535. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Adam D. The three LCAC applications, and these are the originals. We did not put them on the new town cloud because it's I got saw them in the scan. They from yeah. Perry, so I assume. They have first subdivision, so we so we just put names, I think. I guess yes. I wouldn't mind just a little bit of background because I'm so not I got familiar this, with that. I got this email from Maxine over over Cal. She said, I thought I would add, add a little information on three applicants with consumer member position. Each of the three represent a different age group. Vera Williams is a new member. Deanna Dorsey is middle aged and has lots of experience in caregiving. And Mary Wright is grandmother helping to raise her grandson and working with young people in her position as a paraprofessional in the school system. I truly believe each of them has something to offer in our efforts at LCAC to improve health care for Harney County. And these are the um, seats at the table on the LCAC, which is you know, the local CCO advisory council, to have the people who receive the services or have family members who do, who can really give input on what's not working well, what, what would work better, uh, Everything's good on this because around the table, the rest of the people are the providers, like you know, Burns Dental, Symmetry Care, Public Health, you know, all these 
partners, but these are uh, the goal is to have 51% of your members being these consumer members, which is very hard to achieve. So we're, it's great to have some new applicants. So none of these individuals have served private. Not that I'm aware no, of. Right, I didn't. I make a motion to approve three applicants for the Eastern Oregon and uh, for the local health tax council of the, of the Eastern Oregon Organ Care Organization, Mary Wright, Deanna Dorsey, and Vera Williams. A second? And the second is to approve the three applicants for our local health tax of the Eastern Oregon Organ Care Organization, the Mary Wright, Deanna Dorsey, and Mary, Vera Williams. Further discussion? All in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. 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 We are approved. Hmm. Item F, NACO application, NACO application for 2021 20 policy steering committees. I think you guys might have seen this email that came from Sarah Gamani. Good. I have typically represented, well, I've been back and forth. Uh, the years of former Judge Grass could go, I was. Well, we've always had a public lands person. Years even ago, then I would take uh, transportation. It's fitting for how we do things locally that you would be the public lands person. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one you're on. I, yeah. I mean, in, in the past, I've been on justice and public safety because of my AOC co chair position. I like that, but um, I don't know if I'll be that next year. Um, but this is the throughout the year committee meetings, right? Yes. Um, but we just look like we're Yeah, well I, I really like justice and public safety because I've kind of gotten up to speed lately. Um, and then there are some yeah, uh, unless you think there's a more of a need for, for it to be on a different one. Mm -hmm. I think that could well, I should follow what you do at the state level. Okay. So do you typically have somebody in each of these no. or not in all of them? No, have you, we, we could have typically done that one and that one. Yeah, but right. So that's a good one. Be, I mean, those are the two I feel most comfortable mm -hmm. participating in. And it's been my limited experience that these committees, they meet by phone or maybe virtually from now on. Um, well, even prior to month. You were prior to this, it was always phone calls. calls. It was always phone and calls. Most of them are quarterly meetings. And that's when, you know, they have certain agenda items we can talk about stuff and bring up new stuff. But then at the annual uh, legislative, con make a legislative conference, uh, you know, they, those committees meet in person if you go. And um, that's when they either propose new resolutions or uh, efforts or actually vote to move them forward. But you can be very informed by just doing the phone calls and reading the materials. Yeah, new meetings are. Surveyor position. So I had a gentleman call that's moving to the community, wanted to know how our county surveyor was handled. So if it was if it was about bumps on an elected position anymore, it's appointed by the board. And I said, We have this discussion every year, and we mentioned the cornerstones that we always talk about that don't get done. And he was like, Well, that's Everything you should mention is a very important thing. I have to talk about it every year, but our current guy doesn't do it or seem to have the time to do it. So, Dag went and dug up minutes and from June 22nd, 2016, Kenny Delano regarding county super surveyor position. Judge Grassley recommended the court reappoint Kenny Delano, but at the end of the next fiscal year, which would have been July. At the end of June of 2017, put out a request for proposals for the position. <laughs> so we need to open this up. The motion made by Nichols to reappoint Kenny and I seconded. Um, 
we need to open this up. So, move the court's blessing. I will make sure that happens. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. We talk about it every year in budget. So, I'll put on the Kenny you know, just What was the date again for that? June 22nd, 2016. So, the end of the next fiscal year would have been June 3rd, 2017. So, we're only almost four years later. The point is, if you're doing it right, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, item H, order approving petition for county land sale number 48150. This is the the piece down past the fields, truck truck area. Uh, the gentleman was contacted about let him know that you know, we have no, there's nothing in, in the deeds showing easement that he needed to make sure that was something that was his responsibility. He said he didn't realize that. Thank you, I will follow up on it, we have not heard back on it. Um, but it's 160 acres that is in pretty good position that a neighbor will pick it up and we can get back on tax list. Not like a farm referral, but it's back on tax list. So I think I would suggest, suggest we go through with the, the process. And nobody said no nobody will be notified until we go through this process. Is right. That correct? Yeah, so there's been nobody to so once we move this in all surrounding land. I would agree. Yeah, so this is the one we used. So all the little ones, that guy from Florida sent another check for some different lots, and we sent it back to him and said, Until you visit the county, you visit the parcel, we're no longer going to entertain these. Yeah, I do. So, I think that was responsible. Yeah. They're not going to be internet shoppers here. <laughs> Oh, um, so take a motion on this if we will. I'd make a motion in the matter of the county land sale order petition for the county land sale number 48150. Move and second and approve. Oh, I second. <laughs> Move and second and approve order approving the petition for county land sale number 48. Further discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Hearing none. Motion carried. So if we moved our minutes around, we we kicked what water. There's no water stuff. And we don't even, and there's nothing. So we, I don't know water reports. As we use our learning system. <laughs> Did we not have them? I wonder if we could hold all this. Well, then why not? They need it. Normally. It should be falling down. <laughs> <laughs> we do have one correspondence from the Bar of Ag. Now you're for us. We'll clean Eastern Blue solicitation for a blanket purchase agreement. That's the BPA. That's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's under, that's under correspondence. It's a subheading under correspondence. Oh, it is. We well, just, we maybe might have just we had we just maybe just we just didn't get that which can be because it is on there as a sub item and if there were an activity we would have skipped it we wouldn't yeah it will make sense mm -hmm. okay uh, meeting schedule next Thursday meeting June second. Prior to this one, they said this is ultimately the best option because 
becomes out of date and so on and so forth. You get an update to the meter, you have the equipment, and then it's shot in your device. So this gives us the opportunity to have them uh, lease us the equipment, they maintain it, and then in five years it goes away and we get another system to use back up to date. Uh, unfortunately, postage is a necessary evil in this organization. So um, our relationship with Pitney Bowes has struggled the last three or four years. Um, they do not like to come to Hunting County. It's too far from Boise. So uh, they tend to want to walk us through doing the maintenance on the machine, which is not our no, expertise. That's not what we pay for. Um, you can't talk to anyone. Uh, you call and wait for someone to return a call, and they don't. So I reached out to Bullfrog Enterprises in there company in Eugene. Uh, I was given their name by the mailing house Ben Mailing that provides the mailing services for our ballots. And he said their service is exquisite. You have an individual for contact. They are the resale partner for the, this company that um, they suggested and he gave us this visit. It's actually about $38 a month cheaper than what we're doing now. So real similar um, setup. We pay the postage to the company, the company pays USPS and so on. So at least same way we're doing it only it's just this is sort of a cap agreement. No, this is separate. It's for um, it's really non departmental so because not everyone not uses the public oh. meter, so uh, it's the non departmental I use full property meters, I mean probably twenty years and other Oh you did too. So yeah it, Great to work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's great to know that they're and they're local to me in Eugene. And he said he expressed, you know, coming to Burns, he goes, you know, that he goes, we're gonna give you local pricing. He goes, because there is someone out there and it's for the region. We know where we live. Um, he said a service call would probably be a little bit in he goes, the majority of the maintenance will be included in the contract, but if we literally have to come out there, he goes, there's probably about five hundred dollars fee for that, which okay, he goes, but it's highly unlikely. Um, the way this system is built, we would take the pay, take the unit that needs something, ship it to them overnight. They would either fix it or replace it to us the next day. Um, he was highly unlikely to have to come up with a way to set it up, so, which is more than you get. Sounds like it's still in the car today, and it almost get your stuff tomorrow. And yeah. kind of a deal, well, so. and we can get good quick mail from Eugene. You know, it's that way we don't. So oh, that's what really helps. So, the motion to switch that provider? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to switch to both bottom for posting meter service. Service <laughs> provider. Yeah. <laughs> Moved and seconded to approve both bottom posting metering. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's kind of. <laughs> it's actually it's actually with Quadient. Quadient is the company that's they're in partnership with Neopos and Bullfrog, but Quadient is actually in the one system. So Quadient. So <laughs> Call in favor signature. Everybody's like, Bye. Bye. Um, remember on our regular court date, June second, one thirty is our budget approval meeting. And we don't have anything today at one thirty, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Just check. Okay. All right. We have one last thing. Unless you guys have anything else. Um, the only thing that I would add into general deliberation is that the per control subcommittee for the NRAC would like to have a work session with the county court and any members of the public that would like to attend to discuss per control for our county. Be a lengthy meeting, but um, we would like to be able to get on the schedule to have a work session with the county court prior to June. Mm -hmm. Is it that appointed? Is any of that committee appointed? The NRAC is appointed. Volunteer hours. The They're part volunteer of hours is that? Yeah. It's enter the email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. They're appointed by the court. They're going to send volunteer hours. Yeah. So, I didn't have that on my list yesterday, so I'll send you an email.
<laughs> they're part of the interactive interaction. Not all of the members okay. on it are. Uh, the majority of them are. They built in a few other people. So did you say that you're going to meet before June 7th? That's what they would like. Instead of coming to today's court meeting to present the, the agenda that we had today, so they, they have, chose to. They have a deadline? Um, it, they're asking for funds. <laughs> which would be, yeah, they want to discuss the prayer of the fund and the ages contract and things of that nature. So but they don't want to do it at a regular meeting? Well, so our next today. county court meeting is until June 2nd, and with today's meeting being so packed, they didn't want their message to be delivered by all the other goings on. And so I, I actually asked them not to come today, right. and that I would ask to have a additional meeting for that topic so that we wouldn't add it on everything else we have June 1st is the only day I got. And we, <laughs> I've got something from 8 to 9 and something no, at evening. 3. We're talking evening, so. Oh, evening. Okay. Yes. Evening. All right. Like 5 and 30. Mm -hmm. Early evening so we can get on. So June 1st is our regular five. scheduled NRAC meeting, so that would be fine mm -hmm. if we were to we mm -hmm. usually starts at six, but we could try to bump it up. Or we'll have that, or just address that at the five thirty percent. Yes, that would work. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. And where do they meet? Oh, uh, let's go ahead and do this room. Or down downstairs. Meet downstairs. Okay. Um, I'll propose five to them and just make sure that my committee's all yeah. you know, to cover that. So those that are already on are going to be here anyway. Yes. What time? Five. Here. Down here. Thank you. Okay. One. Anything else? I'll just, on for the record, I'll just say I wish that as many people that came to the court meeting today would have voted in yesterday's election. I think that so was the flyer, unfortunately. Yeah, it was the flyer. Sure. Those, those folks all voted. So, yeah. yeah, I totally am frustrated by seeing those numbers. It's disappointing. And I had to tag down my email the PC Trust for Your Information deadline is May 30th. Is that something I need to go over before I leave? What is that? PC. It's a liability trust. Um, today? <laughs> I hope to be able to go by two. So, we did have a lunch. I'm going to get all packed and chained and ready to go. Come back here and be good. Okay. All right, we have an executive session. We must go into. Sir? I just want to make sure. I did a wonderful presentation for me. Sorry, the rest of the world. But he did, I mean, and with just one showing up, he did a full presentation. It was great. I'm sorry if everybody else hasn't seen it. I would I would love to have more people see that system because it's they would be impressed with how transparent and accurate it really is. I mean it, and it became so apparent that it is an independent situation when you're talking about the mess that some of the elections have gotten into because everything's online. We've got two different systems that merge beautifully but are protected and beautiful. Maybe you should throw it up again and maybe you should comment on how wonderful it was and give some details and maybe somebody could tell. That would be nice. Thank you. We, Thank we you. had a newspaper that was uh, <laughs> or just a newspaper, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's good for certain fires. <laughs> and of course we're going to do the executive session under ORS one ninety two point. Six one oh B to 
conduct the deliberations of persons designated by the governing body to carry on labor negotiations. 